How's it going guys? We're moving out of weapon territory today and we're going to be making something that I swear is not a speaker box. I promise. Uh, this, if you've ever been to a small music show you're probably familiar with, is called a cajon. Basically, if your friends are bringing acoustic guitars and kazoos to a gig and you don't want to be that overachieving friend that uh, you know shows up with a full-size drum kit, uh, you bring one of these things. Aside from cymbals and hi-hats, uh, this is like an all-in-one drum kit. Right here, you hit here, it gives you a bass note. You hit here, it gives you a snare sound. You hit up here, uh, it gives you a high note. This is perfect for accompanying acoustic guitars. It's perfect for acoustic jam sessions or whatever you want to do with your friends where you just you don't feel like bringing a full-size drum kit. I was joking about the whole overachieving thing. There are a lot of situations, like musical situations, where this just actually sounds a lot better than having uh, a drum kit like it has a really different sound than a drum kit But it's still like a recognizable drum sound so that your music still sounds good So there's really no way in the slightest bit that the little microphone on my camera is gonna do this thing justice And uh, as you can see there's a really nasty echo in this room and also I suck um, So you're not really gonna get the full effect with me playing it But I'll just show you that the pitches are here uh, And then I'm gonna show you a few clips of some other people playing the cajon just so you can see the uh the possibilities of this thing. So you've got the bass, you've got the snare, and then we've got the high notes. So even if your friends aren't all musically inclined and whatever, and you don't really have anybody to jam with, this thing is tons and tons of fun to mess around with on your own. And in case you're still kind of leery about the sound quality, like, because like I said, the microphone and my camera isn't all that great, uh, true fact, I promise this is completely 100% true. I brought this thing to church the other day so that uh, I could just show it to a few friends. And the guy that plays on stage for the church's band, my buddy Justin, he came down and he played this thing and after like three hits, he said that this thing sounds better than his multi-hundred dollar cajon that he bought from like a professional manufacturer. And he's actually paying me now to make him one because he likes the way it sounded so much. So you're not hearing it from me. I'm not the one saying it. An actual musician is saying that this thing sounds better than a multi-hundred dollar cajon and I'm gonna show you how to make it for 40 bucks. So here we go. So here's basically all the stuff I got to make it. We've got this three millimeter thick, So here's basically all the stuff I got to make it. We've got this 3mm thick 12 by 24 inch birch plywood. We've got 9mm thick 4 by 12 inch plywood. We've got these uh, anti-slip gripper things. These are the things you put on the bottoms of chairs and couches uh, to make sure that they don't scratch up the floors and you know to make sure they're not sliding around. Uh, then we've got this elastic band stuff. These aren't uh, rubber bands. This is like the kind of stuff that you have in your sleeves to keep them tight around your wrist. Then for the screws, we've got these number six one inch long construction screws. These are the ones that lay flat so that when we screw them in, you know, your hands aren't getting irritated by like smacking uh, some screws that might bulge. And then we've got these three quarter inch uh, square poplar dowels. I don't know if a square dowel is an oxymoron. I don't really know the definition of a dowel, but you know, trust me, I, I care a lot. And then lastly, we've got these uh, 13 inch 16 strand snare wires. The snare wire is what you put on the bottom of a snare to like set it apart from all the other drums. Uh, this will give our cajon when we hit it towards the top more of like a psh, psh, psh noise than like a dum dum dum. And uh, sorry to get all technical on you with my musical terminology. 
And then also in the back I've got some half inch thick oak plywood. And a couple of these little wooden wedges too. I've decided on the dimensions of this thing being 19 inches tall by 12 inches square on the top and bottom. So to get that I'm going to need two pieces of that half inch oak that are 12 by 12 inches. I'm going to need one piece of that that is 18 by 12 inches. I'm going to need two pieces of that that are 18 by 11 and a half inches. And then one piece of that 3 millimeter birch that is 19 by 12 inches. And then for the stuff on the inside we're going to need four 18 inch lengths of that poplar which just means we're gonna cut both these pieces in half and then we're gonna need 11 inches of that nine millimeter birch uh, that is one inch wide and then we're gonna need two pieces of nine and a half inch long one inch wide of the same stuff and then four one inch squares of again the same stuff and spoiled a little alert I'm cutting everything with a jigsaw so nothing to see here move along first things first let's just get this out of the way so we don't have to deal with it later we're gonna glue those one inch squares to the ends of the nine and a half inch pieces and just clamp them together until the glue dries. And I have no idea how I forgot to mention this while I was actually recording the video, but we're gonna be gluing those two wedges that I mentioned about right here. Then once all the glue is dried, I just put some extra security staples into it just to make sure everything is really, really solid. And now that we've got all the pieces cut out, we're just gonna do some mild sanding on all of it just to remove all the splinters, but we'll do all of the actual sanding and beautification later. And now we start assembly. First step is to glue our poplar dowels to the edges of our 11 and half inch wide oak panels. And pay attention to which side you're using. Glue the poplar dowel to the side that has the least attractive wood grain, because that's the side that's gonna be on the inside. And I guess while these things are drying, now's as good a time as I need to snip these things in half and I do mean in half these are gonna go side by side so you're gonna want them even so just take some uh, wire snips and cut them right down the middle make sure you measure it and now that these are glued on we're gonna drill maybe five pilot holes here and then put some of those construction screws into this to give it some more strength These are secured, we gotta do the exact same thing on the other side. And while these two things are drying, I'm going to work on cutting out the sound hole in the back panel. And yeah, I think it's actually called a sound hole. And if you don't have a compass or a compass or whatever it's called, uh, you can just use this deadly homemade weapon, uh, which is a steel bar with a sharpie tape to it, and it's pointy on this end, and you can use this to make the circle. have it the perfect nipple and if you don't have all them fancy steel bars you can just use a roll of duct tape and put it down and trace around it so I drilled this hole right here so that I could drop the jigsaw blade into it to start cutting and now I'm gonna go do that and now that the hole is cut out these things should be dry so I can start putting the screws in just like the other side now we glue the sides to the back and we put some screws into there too and here you can see I alternated the screws so that they don't hit each other and I'm gonna do that on both sides now I'll put glue all over all the edges and then I'll put on and put screws into all four corners and after I did that then I did the same thing on the bottom now because I used a jigsaw to cut these pieces out not like a big mill or whatever um, my pieces didn't come out completely perfect so because of that there are some little gaps every so often like right there you can see the light coming through uh, I don't know if this will make really any difference for the sound quality but just in case it would I'm gonna be using some of this silicone rubber adhesive sealant and this little applicator tip thing and I'm just gonna squirt it in all the cracks and I don't know, hopefully that should give me a really good seal. And then while we're waiting for the silicone to dry, we're gonna work on getting these springs into the box. So you're first going to put some dots into the little frightened man's eyes. See how he's like surprised and this is his hair and he's like, ah. Uh, and then you drill uh, some holes and put some screws in. So I got the springs on, but not without casualties. Now we have to fit it inside here. I've got it clamped up with some glue, and then after that's dry, I'm gonna put a screw here and here, and make sure you sink it all the way so that the faceplate can lay flat. And in the meantime, I'm gonna attach this piece and this piece to the top and bottom using some screws that will go through the top into the thick parts. I took a chisel and scooped out a little bit from the bracket and then I stapled some of that elastic stuff across the gap. 
This will make sure that the snares are pressed up against the faceplate. So when you hit it, uh, you don't just hear like rattling or buzzing. You get like a good clean snare noise. And to further make sure there's no rattling, I'm going to take some little rectangles of leather, put them right here, and use some contact cement uh, to fix them in place. I halfway screwed on the front. Now I just got to get to work on rounding out all the corners and the edges. To do this, I'm going to use a file and a lot of sandpaper. Now that I've got the corners all rounded out, I'm going to unscrew the faceplate and I'm going to start doing all the staining. Now because the box and the faceplate are made of two different kinds of woods, no matter what, they're going to look different. They're going to absorb the stain in a different way. Um, so I'm just going to play off of that and use two different stains and, you know, see what looks good. I start with some pre-stain conditioner. This just helps uh, the stain to absorb more effectively and it makes it so that it's not blotchy. Then after about 10 minutes, I wipe that stuff off and I brush the stain on with one of these squishy foam brushes. Then I'll let that soak for about 15 minutes and then I'll wipe off the excess with a rag. And finally, I give it a coat with some polyurethane and that should be it for the build. I just gotta wait for this to dry and then I can put the faceplate on. We should be able to play. Just screw on those little rubber feet that I showed you in the beginning and then screw on the faceplate and you're finished. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Really quick, I just wanted to thank all of you guys for being so accepting of me wanting to do stuff in addition to making weapons. Uh, I can tell you making this thing, it's been a long, long, long time since I stayed up really, really late on a project, not because I felt like I had to, like I had some video deadline, uh, but because I was just having so much fun making it. Uh, you guys have been really, really good to me, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. So, thank you for that. That's all we got for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you later. Bye.